Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video I wanted to take a look at another really really awesome website but this time it's actually a website that was recommended by one of you and I believe this is a person by the name of uh, Jacob Sternberg who sent me this link on Facebook and I really really like this site so I wanted to actually show it to you as well. It's a site called a Space Dashboard. Now in this video we're going to discuss what this is all about, I'm going to show you what it has to offer and then you can explore it on your own as well. Welcome to What The Math. And so let's actually take a look at this website, I'm going to show you what it's all about and uh, we're going to explore this in a little bit more detail, but you know what, it's going to be a relatively short video because it's not a very large website, it's actually um, a website that collects or I guess combines all of the important stuff about modern space exploration into one single site and I believe this was actually made by several people from the so-called, uh, let me actually see if I can open this, Deep Space Network Now. Which is essentially a California Institute of Technology lab um, from um, JPL, uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, where basically a few of these people decided to create this really, 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 really cool website. And the first thing you'll see when you log into this site is that there's actually a live stream cameras from the ISS, from the International Space Station. Unfortunately, as you'll quickly realize, they <laughs> switch off quite a lot. They actually do go down a lot because obviously um, space cameras don't work as well anymore when it comes to streaming. So they'll actually go on and off all the time. And this actually has caused quite a lot of conspiracy theories previously where people thought that maybe NASA is trying to turn off things and not show us certain things in space. But that is, of course, not true because... Um, it, this is essentially because the space station is moving so fast around Earth that it, it takes it a while to re-establish connection with various stations on our planet Earth. And here you can see the uh, Soyuz capsules uh, that are attached to the space station. These are, I believe, uh, used for emergencies. Um, basically, if something goes wrong on the space station, uh, people will jump in there and they'll try to return to Earth uh, safely. Now, uh, this right here is just the I, uh, ISS stream from, uh, I believe, one of the cameras that are pointing outside, and I'm not really sure what it's showing us, but it's uh, some kind of a, I think it's some kind of a part of the ISS. Let's try to reload this and see what's happening here. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but this is pretty cool. That's a pretty cool picture. Um, anyway, so there's a lot of other things like this right here shows you the actual location of ISS on the map, including the Google map. And you can actually uh, even predict um, when it sort of flies over your territory. So um, I, I can actually zoom in here, I believe, or I guess zoom out in that case. And it's currently some, somewhere around South Korea, uh, where basically I am located. So if I had a really, really powerful telescope and if it was actually really, really dark here, I would possibly be able to see it pass by the Southern South Korea right now. Unfortunately, that is not the case for me. So I probably will never see it, at least from my, from my, my own area. Now, right underneath that, there's actually a really, really cool map of all of the um, current asteroids that we've discovered in our solar system. Um, there's like thousands or close to a million of them. And here you can see the inner solar system uh, and everything we found in the inner solar system. Also the outer solar system and of course the more distant objects like Sedna, Aries and so on uh, that you can all see on this really relatively cool 3D map that is available on the screen. Uh, this also shows you all of the people currently in space, which is absolutely awesome. You don't have to really search for who's in space right now. It just says, it has it right here. So there's Kate Rubens, Anatoly Iv um, Ivanishin, Takuya Onishi. These are three people on the ISS right now. And then these two guys, um, Jin Haipen and Chen Dong, have actually just docked um, to the uh, Chinese uh, space station uh, very, very recently. As a matter of fact, only a few hours ago from when I'm making this video. And I actually did watch the video uh, and posted it on the Facebook group if you actually want to check it out. Uh, they basically entered their, uh, the ch new Chinese space station and they're going to spend about 30 days there. So these two guys are in a completely different space station that you don't actually see on any of these maps. Then we have the Aurora forecast, uh, both with the predicted Aurora um, forecast for three days and basically just the map where you possibly can actually see it both in the Northern Hemisphere and of course the South Southern Hemisphere. Um, then there's this really interesting thing called um, Planetary K Index. Now you may have never heard of this before, but I have a feeling that as, as we progress with space exploration, as we actually become more and more aware of things in space, this will become a common hold sort of um, name and item, kind of like 
the hurricane index we have today many people understand the hurricane scale uh, really well especially if they live in um, states like florida for example or it's sort of important to know this but this refers to the um electromagnetic uh storms basically it the it is the so-called magnitude of geomagnetic storms um formed by essentially solar flares and essentially the higher this is the more dangerous solar flare is if this is in the green it's safe if it's in the yellow you should be aware if it's in red things can actually get uh, really damaged including satellites a spacecraft or if you're in a location where you can actually see um aurora borealis or aurora australis uh, essentially the northern and southern lights you should be kind of a little bit more careful because the radiation in these areas will be a little bit higher than usual so this is essentially the so-called planetary k index which which is kind of going to become more and more important now as you scroll down you'll actually discover these really cool um animations of different um parabolic antenna and these actually are essentially different missions that NASA or ESA um, have actually started and you can actually see their abbreviation here. So this right here is the Juno mission. It shows you the antenna, it shows you what it does and where essentially where it's located, the current condition, including the wind speed. It also shows you the actual spacecraft it's uh, connected to and where it's located in the world if you click on the world map. So it actually shows you all three major um, antenna locations uh, for this particular mission. Um, you can actually click on each individual mission and find out more about these uh, particular spacecraft that, that um, are currently in use, including, of course, uh, some of the coolest scientific facts, like, for example, that it takes about 10 seconds for, uh, for light to travel to this particular spacecraft and to return back to us. Uh, so basically, the communication here would take about 10 seconds. And so there's a variety of missions you can explore here. So there's the Dawn craft, uh, there is the, um, I don't even know what that is actually. I've never heard of this satellite, but it's called MMS-4. Uh, there is uh, something called New Horizons, which we've talked about previously, and a few other missions, including Mars Odyssey, um, that um, is basically a mission to Mars. And it even has the not yet launched uh, Mars Express mission that is going to launch relatively soon. And uh, it already has the predictive uh, artist impression of what this mission will look like. So you can actually check it out here as well. And the last mission here, I believe, is known as the TGO, which is the, I believe it stands for Trace Ga Gas Orbiter. It's a mission to Mars as well. Uh, and if you actually want more, even more detail, there's a button right here that gives you more detail that you can click on. And it even tells you about things like uh, speed of the connection here, uh, the power of the antenna and so on and so forth. So there's quite a lot of really, really cool information about each of these missions. Uh, and I'm fairly certain that they're probably add even more of these windows um, as the time uh, passes by. But this is a pretty awesome little website that essentially gives you all of the important stuff right um, at your fingertips uh, when it comes to space exploration and current missions and current uh, NASA focus and of course uh, tells you more about people in space and shows you where the International Space Station is as well. All in all, this is a pretty awesome little find. Thank you so much, Jacob, for showing me this website. Uh, do check it out. It doesn't take long to explore it. And honestly, I actually have this saved as one of my bookmarks now because I do check this sometimes just to see if anyone else is in space or if uh, something new is going on with the Planetary K Index. Even though it doesn't actually technically affect me personally, it's kind of fun to know these things just for the time when we actually do become a space faring race and actually do have to worry about the solar flares and solar storms as well. And as you can see, the ISS stream is down again. And even though there's like hundreds of people watching this right now, there's actually a number of people watching right here. It's 646. And this one is like over a thousand, 1100 people watching this. Um, but yeah, it's down. I think, oh, actually, no, never mind. This one is showing something, but this one is definitely down. And it will, it will go down a lot, but it's still fun to try and see some of these random locations in space as it comes uh, back up. Uh, because you'll actually learn a little bit more about how difficult it is to operate the International Space Station. How difficult it is to actually stay connected to it as well. And anyway, so this is the site called Space Dashboard. So do check it out. Uh, the link for the site is in the description below. And thank you so much for watching, and if you did enjoy this, do let me know if you know of any other really cool space sites that I haven't mentioned previously, so we can actually check it out together. Uh, one of the best ways to actually contact me is through either Facebook or Twitter. I usually reply to those messages almost right away. And if you uh, want to wait a little bit, you can always leave a comment in the, in the message box below, and I'll probably get back to it um, relatively soon as well. 
Also, don't forget, I do now have a Snapchat, which I usually use for kind of a fun purpose, but I also do post some educational material there as well. So if you want to just have fun or snap something to me, feel free to add me as well. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later, and as always, bye-bye.